Hey guys, Asher coming at you today with another Rachel Legends Champion Guide, this time on Korgar Death Bell. But first, a few shout outs to you guys. We have Insane Mainstream got lucky and pulled Korgar from an ancient Please Ash. When you get him, do a guide on him. Love, love the channel. I love, love you. I appreciate that. We have Nathan Garrett. Uh, wait, Nathan, Nathan, Ashley. Ashley, it's Ashy. Get it right. No L. Uh, we have Jill looking for Kar uh, Korrigar Death Bell. We have A L or Al. We got Crumb looking for Korrigar. We got Sahand looking for uh, Korrigar. Michael Bosch. We got Thorn Sequoia. We have Michael again and Hunter and Viper and Jewel Smith and Barbecue and all the people looking for some Korrigar Death Bell. Without further ado, let's cover Korrigar Death Bell. All right, guys, so I'm going to go out on a limb and guess that there's a lack of guides on this Ogren tribe uh, legendary. Kind of a newish addition to the game. Uh, about a year old or so, I would say, inside the game. Uh, looks really, really cool. This dude looks, you know, he fits the Ogren aesthetic just beautifully, right? Uh, really cool. A look about him. He's got the flames coming out of the uh, the battle axe here, it looks like, as well as, I don't know what that is, but the, uh, the, the back piece there with, well, it's so quaint. It's so appropriate. It's apropos. Propos. It's the bell. He comes complete with the bell as well. He's Force Affinity, obviously legendary. The reviews are glowing, and they should be. This dude's really, really, really freaking good. Uh, it's crazy more people don't talk about this champion, honestly. I wanted him for a while. I finally got my hands on him, so I'm excited to make the guide today. He's an HP-based champion on his A1 ability. Actually, let's talk about his base stats first. His speed is about average. His HP is, for an HP-based champion, pretty good. Uh, almost 22k his defense is pretty solid as well for 1255 on his a1 attacks one enemy heals his champion by 10 percent of their max hp it's actually a really solid a1 because of his passive which we'll talk about in just a moment on bell's toll his a2 ability this is a this is a big boy ability here bell's toll attacks all enemies on a three turn cooldown when booked this dude is worth your legendary skill tomes uh He's going to help out almost everybody. Progression, end game, early game, whatever, right? 100% chance of filling the turn meter of all allies by 30%. That's a really, really good AoE turn meter boost. Uh, that's about as good as it gets for, for your whole team, especially on a three-turn cooldown. Also has a 100% chance of removing all debuffs from all allies. Again, we want those both to be 100. So you, you really you really book this dude. You got to book him. He's worth it, right? So a full cleanse, a turn meter fill, and attacking all enemies while he's at it. On the Conduit of Agonies, this is his A3 ability. Only two books and they go right to the cooldown. Ally protection, big version on all allies, and then a strengthen on all allies for two turns. Again, on a three-turn cooldown. This is beautiful. This is, you know, tied with a couple other champions in the game for the best damage mitigation on a three-turn cooldown than you can get on your team. This is 75% raw, pure damage mitigation from everybody, everybody on your squad, right? Uh, he's going to eat up 50% of that himself, and then Strengthen is a flat-out 25% less damage. So you add it up, 75% damage protection. That is massive on your team, right? Talk about a support champion, but it does not end there. With the passive, Violence Locusts. This is uh, no cooldown or anything. It's just always active when he's on the uh, on the battlefield. Increases champion's resistance by 20 and defense by 10% for each ally protection buff on all allies. Quick math, if you're doing it on uh, a Hydra, for example, that's a 50% defense boost, 100 extra resistance. If we're doing it in a normal dungeon, that's 80 extra resistance. That's 40% defense boost while he has his ally protection up, which is so good. Because on ally protectors, we talk about this all the time on the channel. It's tough sometimes. They're great. It's a great ability. Uh, best in the game in terms of, again, mitigating damage. However, they take a ton of damage, the protector themselves. This helps him be able to withstand some of that damage with that defensive boost. Really, really powerful. Uh, also increases resistance by 15, defense by 5 for each ally protection buff on allies. So it gives them a little boost too. If there's multiple champions on the team, blah, 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 blah. 
Counterattacks whenever an ally under ally protection buff is attacked can occur once per enemy turn. Keep in mind, we said the A1 was going to come back into play, and it has. That's going to heal him every time on the counterattack. 10% of his max HP, which scales very well. What a kit! HP in all battles by 30% on the aura as well. So yeah, I mean, if you're looking for just a protector on your team, plus the cleanse, plus the turn meter boost, I mean, look no further. He's really freaking good. Like, top, top tier, in my opinion, uh, when we talk about ally protectors and Raid Shadow Legends. Because he's got the, the, the cleanse and the turn meter boost. That's just so good. All right. So I built him in a... I kind of, uh, I would call it a hybrid build. So let's take a look uh, at how I have him built in today's video. So, Korrigar Death Bell. I kind of put him in a little bit of everything that I want. So he's going to be a jack of all trades, a master of none in this particular build. We'll talk about different alternatives and where I would use them in different areas of the game uh, other than just a bolster set. So bolster, 30% HP ally shield for three turns, heals wear by 10% every turn. I love that he's healing himself another 10% of his HP every single turn, even after that bolster shield wears off, okay? I love the bolster shield. I would use it in dungeons like Ice Golems, uh, like Ice Golems Peak. Uh, I would use it in, well... Doom Tower uh, uh, Waves, in Cursed City, for example. These are the areas that I love bolster. Even in the arena, he's not known as an endgame arena champion, but, uh, but certainly that skill set helps out a ton in the arena as well, right? Uh, he doesn't have to revive which is what we really love on like a cleanser. Like that's why Elva and Pytheon are so strong in the arena meta. However, you could still absolutely use him in a, bo a bolster set in that regard as well. Now for Hydra clan boss, for regular clan boss, both areas where this dude is amazing. In those two areas, I would want him in probably a, you know, you could consider a Guardian set if you wanted to. That will give you more heals and more damage mitigation. Again, he's pretty easy to keep alive because of the self-heal on the A1 and the passive, uh, bo boosting up his own defense. So Guardian, if you wanted to double down on ally protection... You could go with it, okay? That's another 10% damage mitigation. You could go with Bulwark Mastery. You could go with Selfless Defender. And then you've got your hands on really one of the best tanks in the game. Again, provided you can keep this dude alive. So those are some ideas for you guys. Uh, you could run him in Hydra Clan Boss in Relentless set if you wanted to. Get back to that A2, more turn meter boost, and more frequent cleansing for your team as well. And who knows, even in a Reflex set, a Reflex set, if you don't want him to strip away his buffs vis-a-vis -vis those extra turns on Relentless sets, you could put him in Reflex because of whether it goes to the A2 with the cleanse or the A3, getting the Strengthen and the Ally Protect up there basically all the time on Allies, you're looking really really good so there's a lot of ideas that i just threw at you guys you could also go with a two-piece set my favorite two-piece sets is going to be first and foremost righteous it's hard to get your hands on but i love it it gives them resist and we want if there's any champion in the game that we want to build with you know higher resist it's our cleansers because we don't want them to be seized so they can cleanse the cc's off everybody else those provokes those fears those whatever you know uh and the speed, plus 10% speed. Of course, we want that too. We want our, our support champions to be as fast as we can, And obviously. Uh, so today, we have a little bit of everything. A little Righteous, a little Bolster, uh, a little Supersonic as well for an extra 20 resistance on a uh, accessory that I had lying around. We have HP on the, uh, the, the, the amulet. We have HP on the ring. And we have HP on the banner. I have an a Bolster set, so of course, I'm going to go HP. Nothing wrong with mixing in a little defense down there as well. I wouldn't really build him for damage or anything like that so he's a pretty easy champion to build because we also do not need accuracy anywhere in his kit right so when it comes down to it we just need speed and survivability that's what gives us the luxury of adding on a little bit extra resistance on this dude as well right uh we have hp percentage on the gauntlets we have hp percentage on the chest 
and I got this my third ever quad speed roll just about an hour ago in preparation for this video. The shame is, is it's on a five star piece. Uh, so I couldn't use a six star glyph on it. Uh, but either way, it's still a really nice piece. I'm not sure if I want to try to re-roll that too, though. For a quad speed roll, it's a pretty disappointing total number of 24 speed, you know? I feel like I can get that on like a trip roll or maybe even uh, a double roll. Anyway, I digress. We have speed on the boots as well. Oh, actually, I, I stand corrected. We have HP percentage on the boots and speed as an ascension stat. I would say this is more an end game luxury. We're trying to give him as tanky as possible and obviously beef up our bolster shield as well. Uh, that being said, I think the majority of you guys are probably gonna go wanna go with speed. Uh, I don't want this guy much slower than 200 speed for the mid game and the end game. Uh, early game, of course, just as fast as you can, you know, 170 might be all you can get. And that's totally fine. Uh, again, if you're just starting out and you're lucky enough to pull yourself a Korrigar death bell. Uh, so that's the build that we have right now, guys. Uh, immortal is also another two piece set to consider, especially if you don't have righteous gear on this guy. So I threw a lot at you, but I, I think they're all, uh, solid recommendations. If I do say so myself. So Korrigar Deathbell on hellhades.com, before we go to the Masteries, they rank him a 4.5 overall score, and I, I agree with that wholeheartedly, right? Look at all these scores in terms of areas uh, rankings. Clan Boss, 5 out of 5. Hydra, 5 out of 5. Iron Twins, 5 out of 5. Spider, Normal. And then hard mode dungeons, ice golem, dragon, a four and a four. Same thing with normal areas. We have another spider five out of five, eternal, frost spider four, celestial griffin four, arena a four and a half out of five. Oh man, this guy. A 0 0.21 multiplier on the A1, a 0 0.24 on the AoE. It's not bad, honestly. It's not a bad multiplier. So. I guess if you really wanted to, to min-max your damage, uh, you could throw them on crit rate gauntlets too. I mean, that's not, it's not really that bad for an AOE on a three turn cooldown, I, I have to admit. Uh, okay, let's talk about, uh, what do they, rec for blessings, they recommend uh, Brimstone and Polymorph. Now the problem with Brimstone and Polymorph is, unless you're lucky enough to be sitting on a six star awakened Korrigar death bell, which if you are, Congratulations, I mean, you hit the lottery right there. Uh, you're going to need accuracy to use both of these uh, blessings, which is unorthodox to say the least, right? We don't have uh, we don't we don't have any accuracy on this dude. There's no need to put accuracy on this dude. That's why personally, I don't really love those blessings on him unless again you're lucky enough to have a six star. So you see here, guys, I have Dark Resolve, but it's it's a bad choice as well. Uh, I had this from the old Dark Resolve before they redid the blessings. So let's pick a new one together. What do you guys say? I think I'm gonna go with. Whew, I think he's a good option for intimidating presence, right? Uh, you know, if you needed the HP, uh, the extra HP, you could go with Miracle Heal, uh, the Restoration, excuse me. Uh, however, I'm going to go with... Uh, I'm going to go with... Uh, I'm going to go with a, a, an oldie but a goodie. Sorry, I'm hemming and hawing here. I'm going to go with Lightning Cage, okay? Every time he receives his buff or has his turn meter filled, he gets the Lightning Orbs. Uh, the Lightning Orbs are going to protect one of his buffs. We do not want this dude to lose his strength in, his increased defense, whatever buffs you have on this guy, because he needs to be taking all that damage from everybody else. So we haven't shared a lot of Lightning Cage recommendations. I don't think it's an S-tier uh, blessing, but I think it's pretty good. Uh, okay, so we have two ways to build the Masteries. We can go all-out tankage. Or we can go a little bit of a hybrid, you know, for some damage with War Master. So, I don't know. I'm going to build him as an all-out tank. But let me go ahead and pull up, again, hellhades.com here. They say, let's see, standard PvE mastery recommendation. Yeah, absolutely. This is exactly what you guys are going to want for standard PvE, meaning dungeon content, Doom Tower boss content, right? Even totally fine with Hydra Clan boss uh, running this sort of a build, right? But... I want to go a little bit more unorthodox in today's video, and I want to go with a defense build. I don't even want to look at what they have here because I want to just do it uh, from scratch, okay? So we have an option on the defense tree. We can end with Bulwark to get 5% more uh, damage mitigation and Selfless Defender, or we can end with extra resistance. My resistance right now, I didn't even show you the total stats here. 
ER is 107K on the HP, 3,500 on the defense. Again, that can scale up from the passive. 221 on the speed. We can get by with this much HP with this speed because we have the HP percentage boots in the speed ascension stat as well. We have 310 on the resistance. 310 is in kind of that no man's land, right? Where, you know, do I want to get it up to 370? Because that's where it would be if I pick up the 50 plus the 10. Uh, or do I want to say, okay, 370, 310, does it really matter? I'd rather eat up some more damage and be an ultimate tank. Uh, I think I'm going to go with the eat up ultimate damage and be the, or eat up, <laughs> you guys get the point. Uh, we could also go with, let's, let's do it. Let's go support, get some extra HP. Why not? Uh, let's go with lay on hands. He does have the heal on his A1. Healing himself is important. Uh, healing savior will apply to himself. It's a very selfish build that we have here, but I like it. Lasting gifts is most important for this champion. Lasting gifts is so powerful. I need to tell you guys how powerful it is. Obviously, we're extending the duration of the ally protect and the strengthen on this dude. It's, it's very good. Uh, or on our other dudes around him. Let's go with defense plus 75. And then I love picking up blast proof, decrease AOE damage by 5%. That's super strong, especially in areas like Ice Golem Hard, where he hits incredibly hard, right? Uh, Resurgent can help strip away uh, debuffs. We also want to pick up rejuvenation, increase the healing that he, he receives across the board by 5%. Absolutely. Let's pick up shadow heal as well. I mean, we could, I just want to be clear here, we're neglecting for sure some of the... Uh, the resistance-based masteries here that are absolutely worth consideration as well. Uh, okay, let's go with, you know what? Solidarity re works really well with this dude because we're already increasing the resistance anyway. So now we can kind of double down on it. So I'm going to go with Solidarity. I'm going to go with Delayed Death on this dude. Helps out, again, against bosses, specifically hard-hitting bosses. Uh, let's go with Cycle of Revenge. Absolutely. And then let's go with Selfless Defender, right? And then let's end off again with Bulwark. Decrease the damage received by 5%. It seems really basic, like we just th closed our eyes and threw a dart at the wall, and there it is, the left-hand side of both. But I actually really like uh, these this mastery selection to build your ultimate Korrigar Death Bell tank. Ring the bell. Go ahead, ring the bell for us, Korrigar. Ring it. Oh, I wish you could kind of move him to ring the bell. That'd be that'd be next level cool. Anyway, that's our build. Now updated with masteries, we're at 108k, 221. Uh, everything else stays pretty much the same. All right. So the question remains: Can we keep this dude alive? Because he's eating up a ton of damage in this build. You know, let's try him out a little bit here in the arena as kind of a go second option here. Trying out an all mythical team over there. Don't mind me. Let's put him with. I'm. I have such a crush on the king and the queen here. Right. They're so much fun. Uh, so let's go with the king and the queen, and let's try out. I hope you guys don't mind me going with a super pay to win team here. Let's try out today. The day I'm recording this is the day that Siegfried the Nephilim got his buff. So let's just put him on the team and see what happens here. We're going to run him as an aura lead because we're not a fast team anyway and just see if we can withstand uh, this bomb team. The cool thing is we're going against a bomb team, but we have a cleanser and Korrigar Death Bell on the squad. We actually have one over here as well. In uh, But we can use her cleanse uh, ability first uh, because we get a nice strength in and a shield as well, right? They come in, they bomb us. That's fine. We polymorph them. That's cool. Uh, let's go ahead and hit them. And then let's cleanse it all, right? I it's really strong to have the cleanse and the A2 and the A3 on this dude, right? That's that's really strong. Look at the king just going in there. Narcissus is like, yeah, I'm the king. What up? <laughs> He's so good, dude. He's so good. Uh, all right. I'm going to have a video, I think, tomorrow. All right. This is his. This is uh, Nephilim's. I was gonna say I'm gonna a video on the king and the queen on the same team tomorrow. This is Nephilim's uh, new ability here. Wait, we'll attack. You know what? They haven't buffed it yet. The update landed today, but they have not buffed it. It's supposed to ignore fifty percent defense now, and it didn't. So I guess poo poo to that idea. But I mean, you guys saw it there. He came back in and he came in. You saw the lightning cage, right? You saw him go in there and, uh, 
You know what, guys? Let's go with this tanky team over here. Let's go with the tanky team and see against UDK. And I mean, this is all out tankage with a uh a hef rack on there as well right let's go ahead and come back in with the a2 let's uh let's go in with the the aoe i should have removed sigfrin from the team because boy does he kind of stink uh without his buff uh but in this situation right we already have strength and we already have a shield i don't really think i need the damage mitigation from hef rack so i'm just going to come in here and cleanse away uh, and turn meter boost, keep in mind, I'm not just cleansing, I'm also getting a nice juicy turn meter boost there, and I can take away those debuffs from one of our nukers, right? Speaking of nukers, let's see what the king can do right now. Boom, boom, everybody's dead from the king. It's unbelievable. He is absolutely bonkers, guys. It's not meant to be his spotlight, but golly, it could be, huh? Uh, he is, he's something else. The more buffs on the enemy team, the more damage he does. And well, you guys saw the result there. Let's go ahead. And, uh, I actually have faction wars open right now. So let's see him in a really pure, uh, support role, right? We let's tip, get out of here. Get out of here. I want to put him with a team of all epics. Get out of here. Biggin. Let's put Grush in. No, let's put seed chalk in there. He's very squishy. So this is going to be our squad, uh, squad excuse me. Uh, we don't have any revivers on the team. Ugo uh, has a little bit of a revive. But let's see if Korrigar can keep all these squishies alive. That's going to be the real test here. Well, wave one, nice and easy. Bront CH says, players, sheep is ruining the game. Plarium, you like sheep? Here, we got a champ for you. <laughs> I don't think the... Uh, Again, this won't age very well, but I don't think the adding the champion with Sheep is that big of a deal, personally. But I do think that Sheep is a big deal. Uh, anyway, I digress. All right, so here we go. Second wave, easy stuff here. Easy stuff. Look at all this bu these buffs on the team. That's his bolster. That's his, uh, his uh, you know, it's all Korrigar is what I'm trying to say here. A little bit of a continuous heal from uh, Urigrim as well. All right. Oh, God, a two-turn unkillable. Oh, always fun. Plarium, what sadistic son of a jackal working at Plarium is like, let's just stack up a bunch of unkillable, uh, random unkillable capable champions in Faction Wars. That way, when people are running them in the background, they got stuff to do, maybe watching a TV show, maybe you're, uh, who knows what you're doing. And then you go look at your phone, your device, an hour later, and you're stuck just hitting one mob like this. Isn't that the best thing ever? Isn't that the, like, I can't be the only one. You guys have all experienced it. Come on now, admit it in the comments. I'll be right back if we ever kill this, uh, this, uh, this champion. Is it Hexia? I'll be right back. All right, we killed her. We killed her. It took us two minutes, but we killed her. I don't know about you guys, but I'm getting a good feeling about this squad here. The thing is, is everybody is very, very squishy, but we get this big, juicy shield. We get the 75% damage mitigation. I mean, this is how we got Bulwark. We got Selfless Defender. You saw the masteries. You were with me when we picked them out, right? Now, this is how you build a tank in this game. The only other thing that we could do is put him in a guardian set, as I mentioned earlier. But, I mean, I think bolsters just fine, right? Uh, Guardian's nice, but bolster's really nice. That's nice. Uh, okay, red boss, you're gonna be down. Forget about it. I should have put him with all rares. Forget, I don't just don't have enough rares in the Ogren tribe built. Uh, but I was trying to make it a little bit more difficult. But man, this is gonna be easy, 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 easy. To be fair, too, I've always found Ogren tribe to have one of the easiest uh, faction war uh, kind of uh, lineups compared to some of the rest in the game. But yeah, I mean, we're seeing a lot of heals. Keeping up with Urigrim in terms of heals which is definitely noteworthy because Urigrim has, you know, a lot of continuous heals uh, in his kit. Uh, really, really strong showing there. Let me just go ahead and do one, like, big boy damage check on him. We have him in the endgame build anyway, so let's put him on... No, I don't want Siegfried the Nephilim anymore on the squad here. Uh, let's take Siegfried out and put... I don't know, like... Do I want to... You know what? I've never shared... Nah, I'm not going to put him in. I was like, I've never shared any uh, ultimate uh, Galek or Supreme Galek content here on the channel. Should I do it today? Probably not. Let's do it some other day. He needs his own guide. I just built him, actually. I pulled him a few weeks ago. 
just finally get around to building him. And I'm a, I'm a big fan. He's my favorite of the Supreme uh, champions in the game. Uh, let's see. So Seer will uh, will kill this uh, team here. But we're on Ice Golem Hard 10 here, guys. And what I want to do is I just want to run Korrigar on this squad and see if he can stay alive, really, right? With all that damage that he's taking. Because as we always say here on the channel, same thing with like Vizix the Unbowed. Uh, we're taking a ton of damage as a protector, right? So it always comes down to when we're going into big AoE attackers like Ice Golem, Klysis, it's uh it's always that's always the fear right is he just goes down and you're like oh crap i'm 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 it doesn't matter anymore you know that i have an awesome protector on the team now we do have elva autumnborn so we have another cleanser as well as a reviver on the squad so if he does go down we have that right so that was elva's cleanse there first and Korrigar, you can see him on the left hand side he's gonna go in there and he's gonna go in with his A2, that's going to turn meter boost, obviously, everybody else on the squad. This guy, too, I'm not going to show... I've already used all my Hydra battles uh, this week. So I can't show you him on a Hydra team. But he fits into almost every Hydra team uh, really, really well, right? Uh, I mean, think about it. He brings, like, so many of the support fundamentals that you need on any type of a, a Hydra squad. Everything except for Revive, essentially, right? So, uh, and Block debuffs, I guess, to be fair. Uh, but man, if you want to pair him with another support, uh, champion, pair him with, you know, a champion like an Elva, you know, I mean, obviously I'm sure most of you don't have Elva and Kurgar in your accounts, but I guess a strong, a Duchess, a strong block debuffs reviver, you know, he pairs really well with, uh, rock of vile tide, you know, a uh, type of champion like that just depends on who you have on your account. So far, I have to say, I don't want to speak too soon. Cause you know how ice golem is guys. As soon as you think you're, you're clear. He smacks you so hard and everybody's dead. A squad wipe, right? However, I would say so far so good right now, right? We have Walking Tomb Drang. We have uh, Artac. You don't need both of them. It just speeds it up a little bit, right? Two strong HP burners and activators on the team. Obviously, Theodore the Savant would be even better, arguably. Uh, but they're all good. They're all good, right? Here comes another hit. Yeah, this is good, man. It's not a, uh, the fastest run in the world, but it looks like it's pretty dang consistent because even if a couple of these individuals on the team dies, like, who cares? We have a reviver, you know? And Walking Tomb Drang is also a great healer, too, so we have plenty of healing. Oh, man, just the cleansing coming from everywhere. That turn meter boost is so juicy on this guy's kit, right? It's like the, ch the proverbial cherry on top of an already amazing support kit. Is that turn meter boost, that 30% turn meter boost, you know? Uh, they're just like, it's just really good. <laughs> it's really good, right? To have that. Uh, and man, I mean, not bad at all, right? Not bad at all. And I think we had Sears uh, Karma Burn turned off there against the boss, I wanna say. Uh, so yeah, I mean, we're looking at a decent amount of healing. We're looking at a decent amount of support. Overall, a great champion, guys. Thank you for watching and keep the champion guide request coming in the comments below. Much love and as always, take care, guys.